Hey, it's Matt Moscona. You found it. It's AFR Saints, your home for daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Please subscribe, smash the like button, hit the bell so you're notified whenever we post a new video. And our content this football season is presented by BetUS. Score a 150% bonus on your first deposit and a 125% bonus on your next two deposits up to $2,000 when you use the promo code YouTube150. Enjoy the video. Who dat? Saints uh, head into their bye week with a good, a little feel good in the belly. After a seven straight losing streak, seven game losing streak, losing seven straight, you've won back to back games on your home field. You beat your rival, the Atlanta Falcons. You finished strong against the Cleveland Browns to win 35 to 14, run away and hide. And all the while, the division has kind of come back to you a little bit. Atlanta's hit the skids. They get blown out by Denver. The Bucs have lost four in a row. Oh, a lot of people right now are asking the question, you know, can the Saints maybe go on a run here and get back in the race and win the division and make the playoffs? I don't necessarily believe that's the case. The team that I would actually keep an eye on, they are the uh, not the Atlanta Falcons, but actually the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you look at Tankathon, st- uh, strongest remaining strength of schedule. Uh, Atlanta has the 21st uh, most difficult remaining schedule. The Saints 25th, but Tampa 31st. Only Jacksonville plays an easier schedule the rest of the way. The only opponent the Bucs play the rest of the way with a winning record is the Chargers. Aside from that, they got the Giants, the Raiders, the Cowboys, the Panthers twice, and the Saints. So if you're looking for a team to make a run, it's probably Tampa. But all that said, it's hard to ignore what the Saints have done for two weeks under Darren Rizzi. And I'm not just talking about winning the game, but it's something we focused a good bit on. It's how they've won. The, the Atlanta game, you were thoroughly outplayed. You were outgained by 100 yards. You got doubled up on your rushing total. Um, but... You made winning plays. You blocked a field goal. You had the key turnover at two key turnovers in the fourth quarter, takeaways to seal that game. I could look at at the game against Cleveland. I mean, the game, the play that you got a big stop defensively on a fourth down early in the game. Then you turned that into a touchdown late in the game. Tie ball game, fourth quarter. You're at their 33 yard line. You could go line up for a 50 yard field goal to take the lead. Instead, you go for it on fourth and two, single wing, Taysom Hill, boom, 33-yard touchdown, place goes nuts, and then the Saints rolled from there the rest of the way. Darren Rizzi's pushed the right buttons. He's got buy-in, he's got belief, and it's pretty clear he's instituting good culture around that locker room right now, and not just in the locker room, but also in the city, and that's something Darren Rizzi said when he was uh, speaking to reporters on Monday about how he's kind of been received since being named interim head coach. Yeah, I can't stop by my favorite cheeseburger spot anymore on the way home. So, <laughs> no, it's it, people have been outstanding. I'm not out in public that often, as you can imagine. This is kind of this is where I am most of the time. But the few times that I've uh, I've stopped for gas or stopped for a cheeseburger or stopped you know, on the way home or uh, you know certainly going to the Pelicans game the other night with my boys. The people of the city have been phenomenal and, and no surprise. So just uh, very very welcoming and and uh, really really cool, really awesome. We'll get right back to the video. Want to remind you about our friends over at BetUS all this season here on AFR Saints, and they're giving you an awesome bonus. You get 150% deposit bonus on your first deposit and 125% on your next two deposits, up to $2,000. Make sure you use the promo code YouTube150. Let's make our bet for this week, show you just how easy it is to lock in at BetUS. You go to the BetUS Sportsbook, we're going to look for the Saints, so look, no game this week, so how about we go make a bet on the Saints in the division? Hit that NFL drop down. You'll see NFL divisions. It'll give us the odds on every team to win their respective division. So the Saints, two games back right now, but my goodness, the Falcons are flailing. The Bucks have a manageable schedule, but you're right behind them. Could the Saints do the unthinkable? Well, plus 3,000? Those are pretty stinking good odds to take a shot. Let's see if the Saints might be able to do it and pull up in a bad division. Small bet, 25 bucks to win 750. Long shot, I get it, but it's worth it for me. I'll place that bet. We'll lock it in. Ask me to confirm. And just like that, we are locked in with the Saints. <laughs> Plus 3,000 to win the NFC South. Crazier things have happened. Have some fun over at BetUS. Make sure 
that you use that great promo code YouTube150 to get 150% a bonus on your first deposit and 125% on your next two deposits. Make sure you use the promo code YouTube150. Enjoy the video. There is a bit of an underdog mentality there. You know, Darren Rizzi, and I'm bringing this up because a lot of people are starting to ask the question about, is Darren Rizzi a candidate, a legitimate candidate for the full-time coaching job? Look, he's 54 years old, and he is a, a coaching lifer. You know, he became a coach as a GA back at Colgate in 1993, and we've run through his career. And the only time that he was a head coach was at New Haven from 1999 to 2001, and then for one season at Rhode Island in 2008. During his time in the NFL, starting in 2009, up until now, he's basically been a special teams guy. So, you know, for the Saints, I think there's two ways you kind of look at this. And I want to be very clear before I, I give you like a definitive answer and run through my take. Nobody should be making a definitive answer today. It's two games. You have a large sample the rest of the season on which you can judge Darren Rizzi because they're not going to win out. So how they handle a loss and that disappointment, you'll learn about it. Do they come back and play hard? Can they rebound from that? What's the culture and vibe continue to be like around the organization the rest of the way? So we'll get a bigger sample size of Darren Rizzi and we'll have a better, we'll have more information to be able to make a decision. It's like, it's like when you're dating someone, you don't propose to them on the first date or even the second date. I guess some of you do love at first sight, but for the most part, like there's a courtship and you learn about someone and you learn about their, their, their great benefits and their great character traits and you learn about their flaws and you learn if you're compatible and all these different things. And so you'll have this courtship with Darren Rizzi now through the rest of the season. But when you're making a hire, it basically comes down to, if you're looking at Rizzi, are you looking for the coach or are you looking for culture? In the, in the perfect world, you could have both. But that's not always the case with, with head coaches. And sometimes you don't know it until they become a head coach. Like, if I were to ask, who's the best coach? Like, Muse, Paul, like, who would you say is the best head coach in the NFL right now, currently? I'm not like Belichick's not coach. I'm sorry, like, currently in the NFL, who's the best head coach? Andy Reid. Okay, Paulie? Andy Reid. Okay. Is there a better example of culture and, by the way, a great offensive coach? No. You, you got them both. Yeah. Right? That's, that is bar none, not even a doubt. He's the best blend of both. A guy that his players love, and oh, by the way, he's also an awesome offensive mind, how creative he is in Kansas City. We talked a lot about Eric Bieniemy. You know, kind of riding sidecar side to, to, to Andy Reid. And with Bieniemy sort of leaving, remember he went to Washington, now he's at UCLA, and the whole thing was he needed to escape Andy Reid's shadow to prove he could be that guy as well. Well, Kansas City hasn't missed a beat. And I understand their offense isn't this year what it's been, but in large part, you could look at, at, at injuries as, as a massive component to what's happened there. Well, after Andy Reid, if I said, okay, well, guys, like, what, who else would you put on that list? Like, so Andy Reid, best coaches in the NFL. Sean McDermott. Sean McDermott? Okay, Sean McDermott. It's weird, man. Some people thought he'd been fired and yeah. don't make a run this year, but yeah. I would say John Harbaugh. John Harbaugh, John Harbaugh? I agree with that. Yeah. Any uh, others? McVay. Sean McVay. Sean McVay. Like, these are, all, these are all right. These are on the short list of what everybody says. It's not a trick question. Anybody else? Kyle Shanahan? Yeah, Shanahan. Shanahan. Everyone always mentions Shanahan. Mike Tomlin? Oh, God, I'm mad at myself for not mentioning Mike T, actually. There's there's one that you haven't mentioned that I, I hoped you would. It's Dan Campbell. Yeah. Because Dan Campbell is probably the best example of what you hope Darren Rizzi could be. See, there's two ways to look at this when you're making a hire. Yes, you want to blend coach and culture. If you can get Andy Reid, that's both. That's awesome. But the reason you go for the great coach, either offensively or defensively, is you don't concern yourself as much with turnover on your staff. When you're Bill Belichick and you're one of the greatest defensive minds ever, you're going to churn through coordinators in New England. It happened. It was Romeo Cornell and it was Eric Mangini. And there was this long list of coaches that came through and they got plucked away because people wanted a little piece of that magic, whatever it was. Look at what's happening right now in San Francisco with, Mc, with, uh, with Shanahan or in L.A. with McVay. People want to pluck branches from that tree to steal some of that. If it's Ben Johnson, it, you know, if it's uh, Kevin O'Connell, look around the league. Mike McDaniel, 
People are trying to, it's a copycat league. You want little pieces of those branches. But because you've got Shanahan and McVay, you're not worried about losing the coordinator because you still got the puppet master. So your offense, in theory, shouldn't miss a beat. So that's kind of where I think if you're the Saints, where you are right now, you look and say, okay, and this is what I've advocated for them doing, saying, okay, go get the guy off of that Shanahan McVay tree. You just hired a defensive coach or an NFL retread. You know, you, you hired from within and it didn't work. So why would you, again, hire from within, veteran guy, not an offensive coach, like go the other way. Go the opposite of what you just did. Go hire the young offensive mind. Like I've told you, my number one choice is Ben Johnson. That's, but that's the guy everybody wants, and I don't think the Saints are going to be the most attractive job for him um, when he has offers that no doubt will come for him this offseason. But I look at, at Campbell, and I can't help but think, like, could you have promoted Dan Campbell and ultimately had him here? But I rewind the clock, and a lot of people are saying the same thing about Aaron Cromer, who was your offensive line coach. He was kind of like the next big thing. He served as an interim during the Pounty Gate year, ultimately got an opportunity there with the Bears, and it, it didn't work out for him. But I will point out, there are examples of successful coaches that aren't the, the coordinator, the puppet master offensively or defensively. We just mentioned Dan Campbell. I mean, Dan Campbell played tight end, and he was an interim in Miami. When Flores got axed, he was an interim in Miami, and he could have gotten that job, and they passed on him. Detroit hired him, and clearly the thing he has done there has brought culture. Now, the long-term question about Campbell is what happens when you inevitably lose your two coordinators? Because Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn are going to get head coaching jobs. So are you able to replace them? One guy that's been able to do it very successfully is John Harbaugh, who Muse mentioned, which is a great comp as well. Harbaugh, John Harbaugh, was a special teams coach, by the way, as well. So he's a guy who's instilled great culture, great stability in that organization for two decades now, and he's been able to hire replacement coordinators when his guys have either retired or gotten plucked away. So there is a a blueprint that says it's possible. It's possible to win consistently, to win big, to maintain stability with a coach that isn't the play caller. And maybe the most important thing on top of being the offensive genius or whatever it may be is building culture. It's a chicken or the egg question. What do you want? Do you want the play call or the culture? Does does the play calling beget winning, which builds culture? Or do you build culture first, which then begets winning? And I don't know the answer to that. There's different ways to skin a cat. But for me, I'm looking at reducing risk. How can you reduce risk and potentially have the biggest payoff? I still think, no matter what, if it's Rizzi or if it's Ben Johnson or one of those coordinators, if you're hiring a first-time head coach, there's tremendous risk. The question is, what do you want? Do you want the culture first, or do you want the great play caller? Ideally, you get both. But if you hire Darren Rizzi, you're getting one without the other. And you're hoping the culture builds and, and continues to, to, to grow. And that makes you more attractive to free agents and other great coaches that want to be part of your organization. But the opposite can also be true. You could hire Darren Rizzi, and he could whiff on coordinator hires, and you could not be very good. Because this is still a roster that's going to go through some growing pains. Because you're going to get younger, and you're going to get less expensive as you go through this cap situation. So can you hire someone with great culture that's willing to go through that. Maybe Darren Rizzi is that guy. My choice still today is to go get a guy like Ben Johnson, if you can. But if the top guys like that aren't available, maybe a guy like Darren Rizzi becomes more attractive. The big thing that gives me pause, while I while clearly the players love him and culture matters so much, the big thing that makes me wonder is continuing to to latch on to the Peyton, Breeze, Dennis Allen. You just continue to perpetuate this era that is over. And for me, I have this strong feeling that I would rather see them just uproot everything from this era and start over. 
And that's unfair to Darren Rizzi. Certainly it's unfair to Darren Rizzi because he can be his own man, his own coach, run his own organization. But he is also part of this. Maybe over the next two months, he can wash the stains of that era off of him and maybe make a very compelling case to be the full-time head coach. We'll continue to follow it. Thanks so much for watching the video. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, hit the bell so you're notified when we post a new video. And remember to support BetUS, where right now you can get a 150% bonus on your first deposit and a 125% bonus on your next two deposits up to $2,000. Be sure to use that promo code YouTube150.